When you think of taste, the first things that probably come to mind are sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. For a long time, these were considered the four pillars of flavor, the universal categories that could explain the wide variety of sensations we get from food. There's a depth, a savory richness that doesn't quite fit into sweet or salty, sour or bitter. This is where the fifth taste comes in, a taste known as umami. Today, we're going to unpack what umami really is, how it works, and why it's different from the other flavors, right here on History of Simple Things. The word umami comes from Japanese, and it roughly translates to pleasant, savory taste. It was first identified in the early 1900s by a Japanese chemist named Kikunai Ikeda. He noticed that the taste in a simple bowl of dashi broth made from seaweed called kombu couldn't be explained by the four traditional taste categories. It wasn't sweet, it wasn't sour, it wasn't salty, and it wasn't bitter. It was something entirely unique, something deeply satisfying, mouth-filling, and almost meaty, even though there was no meat in the broth. Intrigued, Ikeda studied kombu and discovered that the compound responsible was glutamic acid, a type of amino acid. He named this taste umami, and although it took the scientific community decades to fully accept it, today it is recognized as the official fifth basic taste. So what exactly makes umami different? Unlike sweetness, which signals energy-rich sugars, or sourness, which often warns us of spoilage, umami is triggered by glutamates and certain nucleotides found naturally in many foods. When these compounds interact with special taste receptors on our tongue, they create a sensation of savoriness that our brains interpret as rich and satisfying. Umami often shows up in foods that are high in protein or have been fermented, aged, or slow cooked. Think soy sauce, mushrooms, cured meats, anchovies, shellfish, ripe tomatoes, or even green tea. What's fascinating is that these foods span across different cultures, yet they all converge on the same distinct flavor experience. Scientifically speaking, umami is a taste built on synergy. Glutamate alone can create umami but when it combines with nucleotides such as inosinate, commonly found in meat and fish, or guanolate, which is abundant in mushrooms, the effect multiplies dramatically. This is why a simple chicken soup tastes good, but a chicken soup simmered with mushrooms tastes extraordinary. The compounds amplify each other, creating a flavor experience far more intense than the sum of its parts. This synergy is one of the secrets behind many traditional recipes that we've come to love, even if we didn't know why they work so well. From a culinary perspective, umami is the taste that brings balance and depth to food. Without it, dishes can feel flat or one-dimensional. With it, food feels complete. That's why chefs often use ingredients rich in umami as natural enhancers, for example, Parmesan cheese sprinkled over pasta doesn't just add saltiness. It provides an umami punch that deepens the overall taste. Similarly, adding a dash of fish sauce to a stir-fry or a bit of tomato paste to a stew doesn't simply season the dish. It makes it fuller, rounder, and more satisfying. This is the secret weapon many cooks use, sometimes without even realizing it. Umami is also deeply connected to the way our bodies perceive nourishment. Some scientists believe that our attraction to umami developed because it signals the presence of proteins and amino acids, which are essential for survival. In this way, umami isn't just about pleasure. It's a built-in biological signal that says, this food is nutritious, this will keep you alive. 
That might explain why foods rich in umami often feel so comforting and satisfying, almost like they fill a deeper craving. But let's take a step back and look at the cultural journey of umami. While the term itself is Japanese, the concept has always existed across cuisines. Italian cooking has parmesan, prosciutto, and slow-simmered tomato sauces. Chinese cuisine is full of fermented soy products, dried mushrooms, and broths that layer multiple sources of umami. In French cuisine, you find it in aged cheeses, duck confit, and reductions. Even in Latin American cooking, ingredients like mole sauce or long-cooked beans carry umami depth. Each culture discovered in its own way that certain techniques like fermentation, aging, or slow cooking unlock a taste that makes food irresistible. What's especially fascinating is how umami shapes our emotional experience of eating. Think about comfort foods, chicken soup, pizza, burgers, ramen. What do they all have in common? They're loaded with umami. This taste doesn't just satisfy hunger. It creates a sense of fullness and comfort that goes beyond calories. Food scientists sometimes describe umami as the taste of satisfaction, the thing that makes us say, this hits the spot. Without it, even a well-seasoned dish can feel lacking. With it, even something simple can feel profound. In the modern culinary world, umami has become a guiding principle. Chefs experiment with new combinations to unlock hidden depths of flavor. Food scientists continue to explore how it affects appetite, digestion, and even satiety. And everyday home cooks are learning that adding a pinch of parmesan, a splash of soy sauce, or a handful of mushrooms can transform their meals. What started as an observation in a bowl of seaweed broth has become a global concept that bridges science, culture, and pleasure. So to answer the question, what exactly is umami? It's the taste of savoriness, born from glutamates and nucleotides and recognized by special receptors on our tongue. It's the depth that makes food taste complete, the signal that tells our body we're getting nourishment, and the common thread running through the cuisines of the world. Whether it's in a slice of pizza, a spoonful of ramen, or a bite of Parmesan, Umami is the invisible hand that makes food irresistible. It's not just a flavor, it's the flavor that ties everything together. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.